if someone picks this Pacific Trillium and hands it to you and says, here, I love you, slap them and say, I don't love you. You picked that flower and that's terrible. Make them feel ashamed. Wait, no, never mind. Don't do any of that stuff. That doesn't work on me. So I don't do that to anybody else. Instead, look at it as an opportunity to help them understand more about ecology, nature, and how cool this flower is. So Pacific Trillium is an early bloomer, and that's really good for bumblebee queens because bumblebee queens come out early and they're looking for nectar and pollen so they can start their colony of daughters. Because, you know, those big black bumblebees a lot of you are scared of, don't be scared of them. You gotta make them, you gotta hold them and like put them on your bottom lip and be like, sting me, before they'll sting you. They're not stingers. In fact, we have 1,400 native bees in California, and I don't think any of them really sting. But they do pollinate by using sonification. So sonification or buzz pollination is much more thorough than what the European honeybees, the ones you're used to seeing when you think of bee, those are actually from Europe. And those just like walk around and, you know, inside the flower and they get the pollen on them and stuff. But when bumblebees get in there, they kick their wings out of their sockets and they vibrate. So they're like, <laughs> so they really help that pollen fall off the male stamen and get on the bee. And so the bee can take that pollen to the next flower and help it reproduce. So when you think stinging, you're usually thinking yellow jackets and European honeybees, not our California native bees. And they rely on the Pacific trilliums early blooming to get what they need to feed their babies. Trilliums are called trilliums because they come in three. Try trillium. Three petals, three sepals, three leaves, trilliums. There are several different kinds in the continents. We have a couple on the redwoods, and one of them is the Pacific trillium, which is this one. Just like us Irish Americans, the Pacific trillium has a red-headed cousin called the Great Wake Robin, and it is endemic to California, meaning it only lives in California. Trilliums are very slow growing, which is why you should never pick them. It takes them like five to seven years from seed to a mature plant in order to even create a flower. So when you pull a flower off, you're like really setting things back. In fact, it can take them years and years and years to recover from that. And trilliums left alone could live to be up to 50 years old. So this is an old flower. Well, the flower itself doesn't last 50 years, but the plant can live 50 years. And the trillium definitely gets by with a little help from its friends, including ants. And you're like, how can ants be anybody's friend? Well, on the trillium seed, they get these little things called aliosomes. Okay, it's like a little squishy, sappy, sugary goodness that smells really strong. And so after the trillium gets pollinated by the bumblebee or a native bee or a beetle, and then the flower will actually turn pink and then maybe red and then get a musty smell and then it will just be like, turn into a fruit, a capsule, and then it will fall off and split. And then the ants will be walking by and they'll be like, what is that? What is that? And they'll be like, oh my goodness. And they'll get inside the pod and they'll see the little aliosomes stuck on the seeds. And they'll be like, mm, we're going to take this home. And so they grab the seed, they take it back to the home. They eat the aliosome off or they feed it to their larva sisters. And then they realize that their teeth aren't sharp enough. They don't really have teeth, but go with me here. Their teeth aren't sharp enough to break open the seed. So they kick the seed out and wherever they kick the seed out, it grows. So when you see a patch of trillions, it's probably because there is or was an ant colony right there. There are several plants in the redwoods that use this ant seed dispersal. So when you think of seed dispersal, think of dandelions, how people blow the seeds and then wonder why they have so many weeds in the yard. If you were making a wish, you should have wished for more weeds in your yard. Some, you get those stickers you get in your socks. If you open those stickers and you look inside of them, there's probably a bunch of little black seeds. That's another way a plant disperses its seed by getting caught in the hairs of animals that didn't evolve for your socks. I know, I know it seems like it though. Coconuts float on the water, on the waves, and the wave comes and it goes whoosh, and it washes the coconut on an uh, island and then the coconut trees grow. See, there's lots of berries eaten by a bird and wherever the bird poops it out, there's a chance that that berry plant will grow. See, this is seed dispersal mechanism, and trilliums use ants. Trilliums are also a great indicator of a healthy forest because it doesn't take very much disturbance, like logging trucks coming through or tractors or, some, or a bunch of people going off trail to destroy those plants, those plants that took like seven years to bloom. So at Redwoods Rising, we're a project that combines Redwood National and State Parks and Save the Redwood League, and we're trying to restore previously clear-cut, over-planted pseudo-forest, and we're trying to help them heal themselves. And one of the indicators that what we're doing is working is that Pacific trilliums will grow. 
biodiversity will increase. We'll get more understory plants. We'll get more birds. We'll get more pollinators. That's how we know we're helping the forest heal itself. And you can learn how we're doing this at redwoodsrising.org.